Hey, I've got a Flywire update for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, engine change project on 33 Charlie, the aerobatic to Bonanza. Uh, I'm going to talk about accident reviews and what, how I do those. I'm going to talk about my photo wall. I keep getting questions about that and my Oshkosh plans. So stick with me on Flywire. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, I want to give you some updates on what's cooking around the Flywire World Headquarters. Uh, that's a rolling off your tongue thing. Uh, first, the uh, engine change on Charlie. I got all the bits I need to change the engine, I'm putting them together. And what I mean by that is that I install most of the things like the baffling system, fuel hoses, uh, different accessories, all that stuff. Fuel flow sensor, starter, alternator, prop governor, <laughs> there's all kinds of bits. And it's much easier to put them on when, before you stick it in the, in, in the airplane than it is to do it when it's in the airplane. So, and then once I've finished doing those, bar, those parts, I've got a bit to do on the airplane itself before I stick the engine in. But it's getting really close. <clears throat> so besides waiting for the throttle body to be overhauled, I've uh, been caught up in a bunch of extra curricular kind of activities. If you've been watching my previous videos, you'll remember that uh, while well, I was going to uh, Utah and Idaho and the Husky and uh, that didn't work out and I got sick after that and I'm right in the middle of the process of moving the Flywire World headquarters uh, to Ranger, Texas. We sold the house and we've been caught up in that process of moving our stuff. Most of the future, most of our furniture is uh, out of the house now and I've started mo moving non-essential shop stuff and this takes a lot of time away from other endeavors, you know, like flywire videos or working on the engine. So scheduling the engine change was supposed to be done in May. And then all the time would be available for other stuff. But eh, what can you say? In the Air Force, we used to say that flexibility is the key to air power. And the Marines, I think they say Semper Gumby. So if, you're, uh, if you know who Gumby is, well, good on you. Uh, the Stearman and the Husky are flying great, so I got that going for me. Uh, the dirt work is done at the new hangar and forms to come soon, so we have some issues to work out there, but the building's on odor uh, for the new hangar, so we got to get cracking. Uh, time is starting to breathe down my neck to make Oshkosh with the Bonanza, and I just really realized that in the last day or so. Uh, I don't really like to rush things, and I may just not make it in time. Well, I'm not. So... More on uh, Oshkosh in just a few minutes. As an aside, I, I, wanna, I don't like rushing things. I want to take my time and uh, be safe about it. That's me. Uh, do it my way. Uh, given the reactions to one of my latest videos, though I wanted to speak for a moment about accident reviews that I do and why I choose a particular accident to review. I've been accused of not doing the work correctly in that video and ignoring standard practice, so I want to say a few words about that. I think it's important to note that I am not a journalist. What I do is not journalism. I don't do news. So, yeah, okay, maybe I'm not doing that standard practice. What I do is analyze a particular accident using the investigative techniques that I learned in the Air Force. The outcome of each accident review is a direct lesson we as pilots that we, we can all learn from. So what is most important to rec for me is to recognize the true nature of a situation and take the appropriate action to maximize the survival of chances for everyone on board the airplane. <clears throat> Generally, if mistakes were made, you know, I don't name names. Uh, rarely do I name names anyway. It's just about, in just about every case, each of us as pilots could make the same mistake. And that's why it's imp I think it's important to look at what happened and what we can do to mitigate the problem for our safety and our passengers. So a lot of it leading up to the accident is actually not important to me, not as important to me as what happened that drove the accident after, and then afterwards. What was the aftermath? How, did that, how, did, how it was handled? So um, we have to prepare for this situation, any of these situations ahead of time, preferably on the ground, thinking through the situation, talking about the big what ifs and working on them. So uh, just a little bit more background on my first accident investigation in the Air Force. I learned some pretty big lessons, and I think some of them may apply to the, this particular video uh, that generated all this uh, sound and fury. The airplane was destroyed in this accident. Both occupants survived, 
We interviewed everyone involved, and what we found is that stories from eyewitnesses, as well as participants, present only a part of the picture, and sometimes not an accurate part of the picture either. So as you go through an investigation, uh, you gather all the facts, and you try to put a sequence and all that stuff, and you develop a theory of what happened. As more evidence or facts are revealed, you modify that theory to fit the facts, not the other way around. Uh, testimony or claims of evidence that is not forthcoming is not fact. I'm sorry, it just isn't. In short, I don't put 100% trust into personal interview results ever, and I develop a theory that fits the facts that I can find myself and uh, modify it as required. And if there's more facts than this particular one, I will update it. I'm looking forward to hear what those facts are and see how reliable they are. The other thing I learned from my first investigation was about journalism, why I stressed I'm not a journalist. The board president chose me to present the releasable facts of this rather high-profile accident to the public and the news media. I made copies of the releasable facts and handed them out to everyone at the briefing, and then I gave the briefing in person to this crowd. I think there was about 300 people there. Uh, I knew that they had been given actual facts of the accident in detail, and by hand, and I told them. And that evening and the next day, all the TV reports and the news stories that I read, I saw and I read, well, the only fact that matched reality and what I said was the, the airplane type and the crash site. Nothing else matched and what I had personally told these same reporters. <clears throat> so you'll pardon me if I don't trust what journalists say either. I guess in J school they teach you about impartiality and doing the five W's and the H, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Uh, but in reality, they all slant the story for maximum impact. I'm not going to talk about motivations. I'm most emphatically not a journalist. Don't apologize for that. I analyze an accident based on the facts available and not necessarily the relation of what the person involved says it was. If there isn't enough there and I, and I don't have additional information, well, I generally don't do the accident. If other YouTubers have done videos on it, or unle and, and unless and I have something to add that I think is important, I generally avoid the accident as well. For this particular video, when there are new facts and evidence, I'll update the video. Verbal or written claims are not facts. Sorry. Can't do it. For a long time, I've gotten comments and questions about the photo wall in the background of my video stand-ups. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the photos right now. All right, the photo wall, flywire photo wall. Let's start on this side over here. Uh, that's the uh, P38 SCAT 3. Uh, it's the Fagan P38, and that actually is the last air show I flew in the P38 forum. It was a lot of fun. I had a great time, and I really appreciate the faith they had in me to let me fly that airplane. That was fantastic. This shot right here is uh, 2003 at Oshkosh. This is the day after uh, the awards, and my Stearman won the Bronze Lindy in that award, and that's why this is on the, on the wall. This, uh, is, these Mustangs here, uh, a friend of mine, he does these things, and I, he asked me, hey, if I, if, uh, what's your favorite Mustang, what would you do? And I said, uh, well, how about if we do this, and it's called the San Antonio Rose, and then he put, uh, 334th Fighter Squadron, which is my, I spent five years in that, and the Eagle. And uh, so that is the 334th Fighter Squadron from World War II, uh, Quebec Papa. And it's uh, my name, Lieutenant Scott Perdue. Of course, I didn't fly it, but it, man, it would have been fantastic. Uh, this is just another Mustang. Uh, my wife uh, gave me this, and uh, not long after we were married, and uh, basically made the promise that she'd, uh, uh, buy me a real P-51 something. <laughs> well, we've never really been able to afford that, but uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, I still keep that. That's pretty fun. And uh, normally, uh, this guy re resides on that picture. If you remember my video about where's the rock, uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out, because uh, I think it's actually pretty instructive. This right here is the creek. It's, uh, it's the lake uh, at Austin. And uh, Red Bull Flugtag, uh, the Red Bull folks put on a Flugtag and uh, fly day. And what they had is people make things that would run off of this uh, probably a 30 foot uh, ramp into the water. And whoever flew farthest uh, won, I think they won a uh, private pilot 
course, maybe just the ground school, I'm not sure. So all kinds of people did stuff. This is the most outrageous one, which was a guitar and a, a kind of Van Halen sort of thing. And the guy sitting on it, or standing, one guy wrote it, and his buddies pushed him off the end, and it went straight into the water. And when he came off, he was looking forward, and he was having so much fun, he turned backwards, and he go, he's doing this to his buddies, and that's what you can see in the picture. And then it hit the water, and he went ass over the tea kettle, and the guys over here in the uh, uh, watercraft had to pick him out of the water because he broke his collarbone, and maybe an arm. <clears throat> so it was actually uh, pretty amazing. So this is uh, my F4 squadron when I first joined it. I think I was in MQ, uh, Mission Qualification Training, where I just finished, but I didn't get to go to Maple Flag. And that's what this is. It's not a creek. Somebody on a boat was there and they took a shot of one of the jets. And Maple Flag, and uh, back in those days, they didn't have altitude restrictions. And this guy may be 10 feet off the water, okay? Pilot to be name nameless, and uh, I don't know a thing. Up here is a picture somebody had painted for my dad. My steerman was my dad's, and I restored it. Uh, this is uh, Christine Bolter. This is Ed Bolter and Christine and the cockpit of their steerman right here, and this is in the UK at Swanton Morley. They were really good friends of ours, and uh, um, uh, Ed, by the way, uh, was a Canadian, went to England to fly. He came back to the United States to learn how to fly. He went through the Arnold scheme, flying steermans and T6s and then flew uh, uh, mosquitoes as a pathfinder in World War II. He ended up jumping out of five of them. Hell of a guy, really was a super guy. This is a watercolor of 476 at Randolph, and they're spinning through the clouds because it, there's a hole right there at Randolph. And uh, they did, the artist did this as a proof for an oil painting they'd be commissioned to do for Randolph Air Force Base. So that's the wall, and one of the reasons this goes crooked, well, uh, my friend st stands on it all the time and I try to balance it out but even more than that the reason why it goes a little crooked is because there are stairs right behind there are stairs right behind this wall and when you pound up and down the stairs all the pictures go wonky so and I'm not that anal retentive to fix it every time so <laughs> Hope you like the photos there. If any of you are going to Oshkosh, there should be a chance for us to get together and chat. Uh, here's the, the uh, quick and dirty of the list of uh, uh, things that I've got scheduled for Oshkosh on Friday the 22nd. There's a YouTuber get together at Whiteside Airport, just like we did last year for the ACCAs, but apparently the ACCAs have gone kaput. But a whole bunch of YouTubers are gonna get there uh, and, do, and just see, see what happens. At 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I'm going to be in Wausau, Wisconsin Airport for a talk with the AAA racers, and then I plan to be in Oshkosh on Sunday. On Monday, the 25th, I'm giving a talk at the ABS tent, which is next to Theater in the Woods, at 10 a.m. At 2.30 in the afternoon, Dan Milliken of Taking Off and Brian Turner of Just Plain Silly are hosting a group, uh, YouTube meet and greet at Forum 8. They were nice enough to invite me, and there's going to be a whole lot of people there. So come on by. People like, uh, well, Juan Brown's going to be there, Blanco Lirio. Martin Pauly, Corey Robin, uh, Brian Turney, Dan, and Christy from Taking Off are going to be there. I'm going to be there. Eric Johnson, um, he does great uh, tours and stuff like that. Uh, Carl Hancock, Fly With The Guys. The Fire Pilot, Sean Lawson. Uh, Ryan Dombrowski, Baron Pilot. Come on by. We're looking forward to seeing you. And uh, looking at the rest of the week, on Tuesday at 10 a.m., I'm going to be talking about spins and a decision to bail out at the IEC Pavilion near Show Center. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, Thursday on the 28th, I'm gonna be at the McFarland booth uh, in, one, in one of the buildings, I can't remember which one, at 11.30. I'm gonna do a YouTube meet and greet and I'm gonna have copies of my book, Pale Moon Rising for Sale and Autographs, uh, <laughs> if you're interested in that. Uh, Close as I can get to you for, to flying an F-15E. Uh, I'm open to set up, uh, setting up another meeting. If uh, we can put one together, that'd be fantastic. Just send me a note. I'm going to be doing shorts during the uh, week, etc. So looking forward to Oshkosh this year, uh, and I think it'll be fun. hope you come. Well, I think that wraps up the update for now. I hope you can make it for Oshkosh. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Flywire.